Stardew Valley's most recent update, Patch 1.6, has brought plenty of notable changes to the game. One of these is a new farm layout, the Meadowland Farm, that features several boosts to raising animals, including a free chicken coop and two chicks, a new grass for your animals, and approximately 2,050 tillable tiles for crops with a description, it's not the best for growing crops, due to these tillable tiles being broken up by patches of non-tillable tiles. Patch 1.6 also significantly buffed the Riverlands Farm with the addition of the fish smoke and I think this change has been greatly overshadowed by the shiny new Meadowland Farm. And I'm here to tell you the grass isn't greener, my friends. The Riverland Farm, introduced in patch 1.1 back in October 2016, has been one of the most unpopular layouts for quite some time now. Available crop and building space is separated by a massive river with several little islands that are unreachable and sometimes too small for building placement. With only 1,578 available tillable tiles, players must strategize their land use Use, especially when considering space for buildings and crop fields. Fishing has always been the best source of money early game, and the new fish smoker only makes it better, right? So the question of best farm layout for money is clear, right? It's Riverland, right? So I challenged myself to play a full 28 days of spring on both the Riverlands and the Meadowlands farms. In these playthroughs, I played somewhat casually and I tried to match my playstyle to the respective strengths of each map. And in the end, the results were a lot more interesting than what I was expecting. Well, I really wanted to see for myself just how effective these changes are for making monies in Stardew. Since the Riverland farm now starts with a 10,000 gold fish smoker for free, I decided to start there. My initial strategy for the Riverlands farm was number one, a lot of fishing, and number two, I knew I wanted a lot of crops to start out with, and eventually a lot of strawberry seeds to make this more realistic, so I wasn't just fishing the entire time. I carried the fish smoker with me the first several days, especially on rainy days, and I crafted the worm bin as soon as I was able to. Whenever it rained, I was out fishing on the river with my fish smoker right beside me, smoking as many catfish as I could. It was easy, easy gold, and since I had so much of it, I started purchasing coal from Clint on bad luck days instead of wasting time in the mines. On day 10, I really put this strategy to work, and I reached level 7 fishing and earned almost 11,000 gold from selling almost exclusively smoked catfish. One gold quality catfish in this fish smoker sold for 750 gold each, that's 6,000 gold for 8 gold quality catfish. Another new item introduced in patch 1.6, the bait maker, introduces a way to make bait for specific fish, and you could probably already think of ways to make this a big money maker. Find some catfish to throw into it and you've got yourself an endless supply of catfish bait for rainy days. However, one of the items needed for the bait maker is the purple sea urchin on the beach and I wasn't able to find one in the first 28 days that I played. If I had, I probably would have had even more gold on this run. I think it's also important to note that I only reached level 9 fishing so I didn't get the extra 50% boost for sold fish from fishing level 10 angler profession. Despite that, I had earned a grand total of 116,000 gold total in the first 28 days and that is a crazy amount of gold. I didn't have to worry about tool upgrades or any upgrades for that matter, and I didn't have to worry about buying the strawberry seeds. I purchased 56 of them. If you've watched my 100 day video, you know how bitter I am about the strawberry seeds, so I was feeling pretty good about it. <laughs> It was a very comfy amount of gold to do most of the things I needed to do, especially going into the summer. I felt on top of the world. I will be honest though, at the end of these 28 days together, I really did not like the layout of Riverlands Farm at all. While I do enjoy fishing in Stardew and I enjoy making gold just like anyone else, I'm just not sure I'd enjoy playing on this map long term except to see the cash roll in. I'm sure reaching perfection on this map wouldn't be too bad if you don't mind fishing a whole lot. I think the fish smoker hasn't been talked about enough and it's such a massive boost to the river Riverland farm. I am curious how quickly I could make 10,000 gold to afford the fish smoker on other farm layouts and whether or not it would be worth it. 10,000 gold is a lot to ask when you're juggling other expensive purchases and there are a lot of expensive purchases early on. So yeah, 116,000 gold is pretty freaking good. I have never made that amount of gold in my first 28 days and I didn't even know it was possible. I've just about sold you on the Riverland farm now, right? I bet most of you are off to start a new save file right now, but before you leave, I'd really like to talk about the advantages of the Meadowland farm because if you're playing the long game, the Meadowland farm may be the better choice of the two. Hear me out. Eventually, caring for crops and tending animals becomes mostly automated as a passive income where fishing is the more time-consuming choice of the two. 
Don't get me wrong, fishing is a great option, but eventually you'll start planting your agencies and building your army of kegs and casts in the cellar, so fishing may not be as important to you as you go along. Fishing can take up a lot of time where you may want to explore the skull caverns instead to find your first prismatic shards, you know what I mean? This is why the Meadowland farm is so appealing, especially for players who may not want to spend their days fishing and instead would enjoy having extra space for crops and animals. Meadowland farm has more land available that isn't divided up as severely into different sections for crops, and when you begin the save file, there are two chicks in the chicken coop that grow up to maturity within three days if you feed them daily, and a new bluegrass growing in the fields. A free building for your animals is a big deal, and animals that eat the bluegrass earn hearts twice as fast as they do when feeding on normal grass. They also consume the grass half as quickly so your grass can sustain your animals for longer in the fields, and that's a solid bonus. Bluegrass will also yield two times the hay instead of just one when you cut with a scythe. But does Meadowland Farm get you nearly as much gold in comparison to Riverland Farm early on? I had a hunch it wasn't going to be anything close to what I made on the Riverland Farm, but boy was I shocked. So I played another 28 days, this time on the Meadowland farm with the focus on raising animals and caring for massive crop fields. I used fishing to get the ball rolling since fishing is always the best source of gold early game on any farm type, and I fished up an ancient seed on day 4 so I'm kinda sour this wasn't a dedicated playthrough. I also purchased two more chickens on day 4 for the coop and after having several days of bad luck in the mines trying to find the required earth crystals, I found two earth crystals on day 10 for two mayonnaise machines. I also saved a lot of the eggs I had until I could place them into the mayonnaise machine, so I was able to make more gold that way. I demolished Abigail at the egg festival, and I purchased a grand total of 108 strawberry seeds for my crop fields. Robin finished building my barn on day 17, and I bought four cows at Marnie's. They started producing milk on day 22, and with the cheese maker, I was making something like 3,000 gold per day just with cheese and mayonnaise. On the last day of spring, I purchased the fish smoker recipe, and I was able to craft it right away. And in summer, I would most likely use it on the catfish and the cinder sap forest, the puffer fish, or the super cucumber with with the fish bait. I sadly realize you only get two harvests of strawberry seeds without speed grow, but I made something like 34,000 gold from strawberries alone, while the rest came from fishing and other farming products, mostly mayonnaise. But anyways, you're probably wondering how close I got to 116,000 gold since that's the number I have to beat, right? At the end of the 28-day Meadowland Challenge, I had almost 107,000 gold in earnings. That's a 9,000 gold difference, about 8%. I had to save more gold early on to purchase even more strawberries for the fields, and most of my day was spent watering them. In the end, my Meadowlands farm had four mature chickens and four mature cows with cheese and mayonnaise machines. At some point, the income from crops and animals just started to snowball, so after this playthrough, I feel like Meadowlands will close the gold gap pretty quickly over the coming seasons. If there had been more rainy days to care for all my crops, I may have been able to make even more gold at the end of the season, similar to Riverlands. But even if Riverlands were significantly ahead of Meadowlands at the Summer 1 Divide, Meadowlands is more of an investment in the future. The cows and chickens are going to keep producing, but fishing only gives you gold when you fish more, and it gives the same amount once you hit level 10 every time regardless. So Meadowlands will pull ahead long term. Or at least, that's what I think after doing this challenge. So at the end of the day, this might all come down to play style and what you prefer when you play Stardew Valley. The fish smoker might actually mean nothing to you if you don't enjoy fishing for literally days in a row in Stardew Valley, but hey, there are mods you can add to your game if you want to give it a shot and see for yourself. I know a lot of players don't exactly enjoy the fishing mini game, so that's always an option. And the advantages to Meadowland Farm may mean nothing to you if you don't care a whole lot about raising animals or having massive crop fields. Maybe you'd rather fill up the greenhouse and keep your space outside for other buildings. After testing out my theory with the fish smoker, I am pleasantly surprised and I'd love to take a spin with a longer day challenge to see just how much better I could do on the Riverland farm. Let me know if you'd be interested in that because I certainly would enjoy it. Overall, I thought this was a super inspiring experiment even if I had a hunch all along which one would bring in the most gold. I'm curious what you all think about this. Which farm layout is your favorite and will you try this little experiment as well? Let me know how you do in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody!